show you how to hook it up. I already got the positive side on here. You can see. Lose them. Take one of them off. Oh, that's, yeah, there. Okay, there's that one. And there's two not there's notches on each side of the plastic piece. Right there. And make it focus. Right there. And that's where you want your wire to go into. So I put the washer in my mouth. I'm going at one handed. So, get that on there. Okay. Turn loose. Put the washer on. Sometimes I'll watch what I'm doing through the camera. And I should actually be looking at what I'm doing instead of trying to work through the camera lens. So you'll just snug it up on there. Okay. And then. Yeah, I hooked your pants up. You did? Okay. And you get you a grounding rod. I'm gonna shine it up. And uh, I bought some of these. Beats going out of business. And they connect to the grounding rod and the fence wire goes through that. So I'm gonna shine that up. I'll show you here in just a second. Alrighty. I got hooked up to there. And I got hooked up to here. Right down to here, where this screw is, and it pinches in against it. And I just I wrap it around. You don't have to, but I do just for, for good measure. And that's the ground wire. This is the hot wire. battery. See, when I first bought them, they had the solar panel option that you could tie into it. And I checked my local feed store and they said that they no longer made them. So I don't know if, if anybody knows it's the Patriot bench chargers. Uh, please let me know because I'd like to because I got like five of them. I bought them from a feed store that went out of business that I used to work at. I ran a skid steer L190 enclosed cab. Anyways, um, but they're a really good charger. They will knock the pee out of you. I think uh, these here are like a eight or nine joule output and like a 13, 14, maybe 15 joule store. So it's it's pretty tough so that's that so I'm gonna hook the battery up to it and we'll test it and see how much juice we got so here we go 
Alrighty, this is a add-on to the earlier video today. Right here is where I had two run bell feeders set. And right there's one. And I'll show you the next one here in just a minute. But my cows had gotten in my hay field over here. And I'll show you the reason why. They got rolled from in front of that junk pile down this little steep bank through all this rough beaten terrain half woven wire fence walked down tromped up all sort and calf nursing well I think there's one made it to there I think the bull had done it, in my opinion. And right there's, see the white speck in the camera? She's going back into the hay field. Because I'm waiting on my wife to bring me some feed <clears throat> to get the cows on the other side of that barn into the good grass instead of this short stuff. But right there's one feeder. It'd have been in the creek if it wasn't for the dam of rock there. And right down here. Okay. I figure I'd just pause you because who wants to watch me walk across the field shaking a camera? But you can see there's a tree. And ta da! Now, how on earth. How in the world did they manage to get that feeder to come all this way? From way over there, all the way over here, into the creek, over the bank, into the water without ever turning it over. I can barely move them around without knocking them over, but somehow, some way, they managed to they managed to do it. So, what did it do? It hit the fence, grounded it out, and caused, caused the cows to get in the lot. Or not, not the lot, gracious. Into the hay field. As you can see, there's one way over there. I can't tell if she's above the fence or not, but I feel like she's below the fence. In the hay field. So, it's probably 20 after 8 now on a Sunday. Yes, farming is a seven day a week job. But, it's just part of it. Um, this here, I'm going to put it in corn. I've done decided I'm going to put this little patch here. Probably, I'm going to say two acres. This is where I feed all winter. So it should have some pretty good goodies in the ground. And it's, we had a big flood here last year. and I uh, can't remember if I ever told you or not, but where I'm standing, there was about five feet of water, roughly. And... Water come down off there and washed all kinds of rock and stuff. And there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm going to push out with the tractor. And just a lot of sticks and rocks that needs picked up. And, and I have a no-till planter. But I'm probably... I'm probably going to... I don't know. I might run a disc through it. I don't know. I'm not sure, because I really hate to have the people that do the burn downs come all the way down here for two acres, and I may do it by hand. I got a three-point inch sprayer, but it probably hasn't been used. Well, my dad has a three-point inch sprayer. It probably hasn't been used in 15 years. So I'm saying it needs a little TLC, and I'm sure the pump's froze on it and everything else. So 
I'd have to do this by hand. And I may do it. I don't know. And I may just disc it up and may even plow it. So I have a three-point hitch tiller that I could till it up with. Make it nice and smooth. And but I don't know. That's just me rattling. And the way my luck is, I would plow it up and have it all nice and pretty. And another big flood come through and wash all my topsoil off. That'd be my luck. So, anyways, that's that. For some reason, the cows just, part of the cows, just can't find their way around to the gate. And it's because I want them to go to the gate. When I don't want them to, they will find their way no problem. But then I want them to go through the gate, they'll stand out here and starve to death and eventually tear into the hayfield. So, I think I'll wrap that up for the evening, so comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, um, whatever you want to do. So, that's that, so we'll catch you till the next time.